I got some smelly deliciousness in there. Yep. I pretty much look like an idiot. These flippy floppies. What is up my friend, this is Jason, and today we're gonna talk about packing because I've been getting the question over and over, how did you pack carry-on only with all the tech and camera gear that I have to bring for a 10-week trip across Europe? So I'm gonna show you everything that I packed, talk about why it's important, talk about some of the stuff that I wish I hadn't packed and that I won't pack next time, and also talk about a bunch of tiny hacks that have helped me save a ton of space, especially traveling with this much tech. But before we talk about what's inside my bags, it's probably important to understand what's not inside my bags. So it's probably important for you to understand what I look like when I'm traveling from place to place, when I'm getting off a bus or a plane, or when I'm getting checked into my hostel or my Airbnb. I pretty much look like an idiot. Kind of looks like this. Yep, this is how I roll. Look, I go to school to learn, not for a fashion show. It's cold as hell where I'm at right now. But this is literally how I look from day to day whenever I'm going from place to place. Tortuga backpack and my Angry Lane backpack. And honestly, I have that GoPro that I'm using right now on my belt and that A6500 with a mic and a dead cat. So let me get all this stuff off because I'm already sweating my ass off. And we'll dig in to exactly what's in these bags. All right, so first things first, let's talk about what I'm usually wearing when I'm traveling and some of that stuff that I just took off. So this is a Marmot rain shell. This thing's super breathable. It's got big old armpit holes that you can zip up and zip down. It's got a fold-in hat. Super lightweight, keeps the rain off. So as opposed to packing a big puffy or something like that, this is my go-to jacket. Underneath that jacket and over this shirt, I was actually wearing a smart wool long sleeve base layer. And this is my only long sleeve shirt that I brought on this trip. Half gloves, these things are great because they keep me a little bit warmer, but I can still manage my cameras and my devices and all that stuff. And on my ears were essentially a pretty cheap pair of earbuds. Typically whenever I'm traveling, I need to listen to Google Maps. So I put one of these in my ear, turn it on Bluetooth, and this allows me to listen to my directions, keep my phone in my pocket where it's safe, especially when I'm traveling on subways or places where I'm not sure about how safe I am or whether there's pickpocket issues. You wanna keep your tech protected. Yeah, a lot of people have their phones out, a lot of people have their tech out. It's your decision, depends on where you're at, it's all circumstantial. I try not to take any chances. So I'm also wearing a base layer underneath my pants. I got my base layer, and I got my cool revolver pants. These pants are actually really important because these allow me to stash a lot of my valuable items inside pockets, inside pockets. So these are essentially crazy ass cargo pants. They convert so I can turn them into shorts. The cargo pockets down low, on the left side, I actually have a pocket within a pocket that has a zipper. That's usually where I'm keeping my passport and sometimes my wallet. I'm not necessarily keeping all my money in that wallet. That's kind of where I'm gonna hide it to where if somebody wants to pickpocket me in the easy pocket, they're not gonna get at all of my credit cards and all those goods. So I'll, I'll keep some cash in my upper right hand pocket. On the right side, I have another cargo pocket that has pockets inside pockets. So this allows me to keep a lot of things not inside the super easy access pockets that most people get pickpocketed through. All right, so now that you know exactly how to rob me whenever you see me on the street, let's dig into my carry-on luggage bag that usually has all of my clothing and the things that aren't super valuable to me. That's the bag that's gonna get put in overhead storage on most plane flights. And a lot of times on buses, this is going in the cargo hold underneath and my eyes are not on it for that entire ride. So I don't put anything valuable in this bag. So first things first, this is a Tortuga carry-on backpack. I swear by this thing. I've been using it for about two and a half years now. Got super comfortable straps on the back for throwing it over your shoulders. It has hip belt straps so you can get some of that weight up off of your back. It's waterproof, tons of compartments. And this is the 35 liter version. There's also a 45 liter version. But this 35 liter version tends to be the size of more budget carriers. I knew that I was gonna use a lot of budget carriers and I just didn't wanna screw around with them, giving me a hassle of me losing 25 to 45 bucks just because my 45 liter is crammed full of stuff, thus too big. So I went with the 35 and if I jam this thing full of stuff, I'm probably gonna be safe. Right out of the side pocket, I do have an umbrella. Bought this in Ireland, it got dicey there. It just made life a little bit easier. I could go either way on this, but it was a $15 umbrella. If need be, I'll donate it to a hostel or give it away. Packs on a little bit of extra weight, but it is kind of nice whenever you just got those drizzly days back to back to back and you still want to explore. Eight pairs of socks. I started this trip with five pairs of socks, but I bought three on the way. Look, when you're wearing these things on a regular basis and you're hiking all over the place, socks wear out a lot faster than when you're at home and you can just switch a pair in the middle of the day because you know that you did some exercise. Ideally, I'd have five pair in here, 
but right now I have eight. Probably gonna get rid of a pair or two before the end of this trip because they're wearing out. Eight pairs of skivvies. Look, I also understand that there are budget travelers out there that will swear by three pairs of light travel underwear that they can wear for three or four days at a time. I like my boys to be happy and sitting on buses, sitting on trains, I'd rather err on the side of caution. Six t-shirts total. One of these is a dry fit wicking t-shirt. The other one's pretty crappy cotton blends. Right now I don't have the money to replace these with really good travel clothing. Maybe on the next trip. Two more pair of pants. These are the cool revolvers. These are convertible, so they change down in the shorts. They're exactly the same pair that I'm wearing. And I do have a pair of jeans. Sometimes just putting on a nice pair of jeans and chilling out, it's just comfortable. These are really heavy though, so they do add a lot of weight to your pack. This is actually my laundry bag. It is also a dry bag. So if for some reason I got into a monsoon and I needed to put all of my camera gear into something especially dry, I could use this. But just used as a laundry bag, you wanna keep those dirty, smelly clothes away from all your other stuff. Pack this in, fill it up. Once it's full, hand it off to whoever is doing your laundry at the hostel, or if you're doing it yourself, you can just walk it down to the laundromat. Very handy. This is a C to Summit bag. Super compact travel towel. You see these all the time in hostels. A lot of people are using these nowadays. They dry quickly. They're not the most comfortable towels, but the whole point is they pack down super small. They get the job done. Sometimes you have to give up a little bit of comfort. I'm staying in an Airbnb right now. They got big, comfortable towels, so this one's staying in my bag for the next four days. Quicksilver board shorts. These are great not only for hitting the hot tub or hitting the pool, but these are also fine for working out in. Again, my pants are convertible pants, so I have proper shorts that I can wear around on the regular, but these are good for those in-between times. Flippy floppies. If you're staying in hostels, if you're staying in any communal environment where you're using showers that other people are using on a regular basis, you want to protect your tootsies and wear some flippy floppies. These are also great when your dogs are barking, you want to get them out of those shoes that you've been hiking in six, seven, eight miles a day and just let them breathe. I already own this pair of sandals. What I would do differently is buy some super slimline ones. That would save me a little bit of space and they'd still be just as comfortable kicking around essentially barefoot. Buff. If you don't know what a buff is, these things are super versatile. It's essentially just a big sleeve of fabric. But it works as a scarf, works as a hat. If you want to get that wind off your nose, these buffs are super handy. These things are like five or ten bucks. This one was free. Camouflage is not my thing, but hey, can't be free sometimes. This is a Marmot Compressor Plus backpack. Super lightweight. It's not waterproof, but it does have a couple of pockets on it. So this is for when I want to go hiking around and I don't want to use my heavy computer backpack. Blow up travel pillow. These things reduce down really light and they actually come in great in a pinch whenever you're on a train or a bus that has terribly uncomfortable seats. Got some documents from when I got a tooth pulled in Budapest. If you haven't checked that video out yet, what are you waiting for? Reusable plastic bag. I had to buy this at some point whenever I was grocery shopping. I didn't have a bag. This has been in my pack now for about four weeks. I would prefer this not be a plastic bag, but I had to do what I had to do in the moment. That's why I'm reusing the hell out of it. Cough drops and drugs because on the road you get sick sometimes. And I did last week. Shoe pills. Bought these back in Budapest because my dogs were barking and my shoes were starting to stink. I have never had stinky feet before, but now I understand why a lot of backpackers and hostel travelers do. Unfortunately, when you're wearing the same footwear day in and day out, no matter how good your hygiene is, your shoes start to stink. These shoes were actually bought brand new right before this trip. These types of things are on the market all over the place. These particular ones, you unscrew them. They got some smelly deliciousness in there. These actually have worked quite well. I was really surprised. Random stuff scattered throughout my bag. Earplugs, always have these in hostels and anywhere you're staying. Little packets of laundry detergent. In normal washing machines, if you have a small load, I use these all the time. You can also use these in a bathtub or a sink to do a quick wash. Moisturizing lotion so I can stay pretty. Found some more earplugs. Sketchbook and journal. This one's a little bit heavy. Honestly, I haven't written a thing in it. I do most of my writing digitally. I do it on my phone or I do it on my computer. Two terabyte hard drive. Yeah, normally I don't leave expensive tech in this bag. A lot of times this will go into my tech backpack if I have room, but this is usually stashed away in this bag and I'm pretty safe. Two locks for this bag and I use this one on any hostel lockers or anything like that whenever I'm locking stuff up. Before I forget, one more thing that was actually in my Tortuga is a rain cover for that. This isn't specifically for this backpack, it's actually for one of my Osprey backpacks from back home, but it fits perfectly over this bag. So if I get caught in a downpour, that thing is water resistant, water repellent, but this extra layer really helps. Alright, so let's talk about my dop kit real quick. It's pretty minimal. By the way, my mama made me this. 
It's perfect. Thank you, Momo. So what I carry is pretty minimal. Deodorant, hair gel, toothpaste. Be careful with toothpaste of this size. The 100 milliliter rule for some countries actually applies to the size of the container, not necessarily how much liquid is inside that container. So some countries, this would not fly. This would get thrown out. Much easier if you just get travel size. This was half full whenever I left home. I knew I wasn't gonna run into any issues. Floss, toothbrush. It's not a travel size toothbrush. I could lose some weight there. Drugs, Q-tips. I got a repair kit just in case I need to repair anything. It's super light, doesn't take up much space. Haven't used it yet though. Tums from a Tum Tum. Clippers, tweezers, nail file, antibacterial soap. I do typically have a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. Ran out of that recently. Luckily, I'm in an Airbnb that has that. But that's it, my dog kit's pretty light. All right, so let's get into the good stuff. This is the Angry Lane backpack that I keep all of my tech in. This bag is actually as heavy, if not heavier, than my Tortuga backpack. I did a whole nother video about this pack. I spent a ton of time researching this thing. It is waterproof slash proof. It's got a cord so I can lock it to things. It's actually the perfect size for small personal items on a lot of budget carriers. A lot of budget carriers will get really specific about the size of your personal item. So I made sure to buy a bag that fits those dimensions. I can pack it full, had not had an issue yet. But let me show you how much stuff I can pack into this thing. Got my hat, bought this in the Aran Isles. A hat made from the wool from the sheep on the Aran Islands in Ireland. So this is kind of a keepsake. This is my camera bag. This has a couple extra cards in it. There's no batteries in here because they're actually in another pocket that I can get to really quickly. A couple spare pieces. Entire other camera in here. This has become my backup now to Sony RX100 Mark V. Water bottle stuffed on in there. This is heavy, it's bulky, but I feel like I'm doing my part. I try to use as little single-use plastic as possible. I also have reusable utensils that I carry on my backpack so that I don't have to use plastic forks and plastic spoons if I have this backpack with me. Power cord, no getting around this. Had to use the extension too, is what happens when you have a MacBook Pro. MacBook Pro, TomTok case. <laughs> Extra padding. Whenever you're cramming a bunch of stuff into these bags, you want to make sure that you have enough padding in between them to where nothing's getting crunched. This is my beast. This thing weighs a ton, but again, it's a necessary evil. Ah. Hidden waist belt wallet. This loop goes through your belt loop and you tuck this down in your pants. So if you don't have cargo pants and things like this where you have hidden pockets, or even if you do and you really just want to make sure that you're safe, Bob's your uncle, nobody knows where your stuff's at. I don't use it all the time, but I do have it for those super dicey situations where I might be traveling in some highly occupied subways in sketchy parts of town. Six dollar sunglasses, haven't worn them once. Second pair of earbuds. When you're using your earbuds all day long, they tend to die. When I'm editing video and my earplugs die, I need to keep moving. I have three total batteries for my A6500 and three total batteries for my GoPro. International power adapter. This thing allows you to plug in in almost any country. Gotta have this. This one actually has three USB ports and a USB-C, so I can charge almost everything straight off of this if I'm not charging it off my computer. I think this is called a USB micro cord. This is my USB-C cord. These are pretty long cords but they're actually quite helpful if I'm laying in bed in a hostel and I wanna plug my stuff in and still be on it. Having the longer cords is a nice bonus. Wireless mouse. This is a Sateki wireless mouse. Look, editing video, I like to have an actual mouse. This takes up a good bit of space, but it's pretty light. Love this thing. Having wireless, super important, especially with the new MacBook Pros that only have USB-C ports. Super high capacity power bank. This is RAV power. This is 13,400 capacity. It's one of the largest ones out there. It's also literally one of the largest ones out there. This thing's heavy, but it does have two USBs. So if I'm on the go, I don't have quick access to power. I can charge my phone very quickly. This actually charges my GoPro really quickly if I need to. And I also have this multi-charging cord. This has a cord adapter for almost any situation. So a lot of times I'll plug this into here and plug it into two of my devices and I can charge things very quickly. This is good for three or four charges for most of my devices. So this brings me to another huge pro tip. I have three different kinds of cameras with multiple batteries, but I don't have any charging stations for those batteries. I left all of those at home because they're very bulky. You can buy spare batteries and charging bricks that'll charge two or three batteries at a time, but the problem is they're typically pretty big, and if you have to carry those for three cameras, you're taking up a lot of space. Most of these cameras, you can actually plug a USB straight into that camera and charge those batteries. So at night, I'm plugging everything in. I'm plugging one or two cameras into the wall so that those batteries that are inside the camera are staying charged. I almost always have two to three backup batteries that are charged or I'm charging things overnight to make sure that I have enough on the go. In cold weather, batteries die quicker. Gotta keep those things charged up. 
but I save a ton of space by leaving those bulky battery charger bases at home. This bag is water resistant, but it also has a built-in rain cover just to double up whenever it's pouring outside. Tons of goodies that I put on here. Another lock. Again, I can lock this around a post, lock it around a table, so I need that extra lock. This is one of those small packing cubes and this is where I keep my other tech gear. Most of the time this is going in my luggage bag because this stuff isn't that important. I have a multi-port USB adapter for my computer. This is USB-C, but I can put... What the f... This plugs into my computer's USB-C, gets powered by my computer, but I have two high-speed USB ports. I have memory card ports for any kind of SD cards or camera cards. HDMI, DCN, and an Ethernet port, which I would never use. Super handy. Killing me, Smalls. Super handy, especially if you're running a new MacBook Pro that only has USB-C ports. Rechargeable beard trimmer and the charger. This is pretty bulky, but I don't use razors and I really haven't found anything else that I'm happy with. Another spare set of earbuds, charging cord, 16 gigabyte, and some other various extras. All right, so I feel like that is a ton of stuff that I've been able to pack into one carry-on backpack and a personal backpack. But I would actually change quite a few things. So you can see here, these are things that I would not bring on this trip. I would swap them out. One of these t-shirts, I would probably choose another base layer because I've gone from places that were 80 degree Fahrenheit. In the next few weeks, it's gonna be lows in the 20s in Munich and Paris. This second pair of pants, I just don't need them. Between one convertible pair of pants, a pair of jeans, and another pair of shorts, more than enough, save the space. As I mentioned, I'm currently running with eight pairs of socks because I added some during this trip. Definitely don't need two or three of those pairs. Running with eight pairs of skivvies, probably only need five or six, so get rid of at least two of those, more space in the bag. This extra backpack was a nice idea, but I just haven't used it. I end up using the Angry Lane pack for almost everything. This thing is very streamlined, but it takes up a ton of space when you're talking inches in carry-on only luggage. Spare USB, couple extra cords. Again, inches count, ladies. Don't try and tell me otherwise. And my sketchbook. <laughs> I'm a romantic kind of guy. I love the idea of jotting some notes or writing something on the side of a beautiful river in Paris, but it's just not happening. This thing takes up a ton of space and it's actually quite heavy. All right, so there you go. I hope that was super helpful. That's what I've been lugging around for five or six weeks now. I got about four or five weeks left in this trip. I've been really happy with the way I packed on this trip. Yeah, I'm gonna swap some things out later. I'm gonna get some more travel appropriate clothes, some things that are made out of better materials down the road. But right now, this is what I got. This is what I can afford and it's working for me. The bottom line is no matter where you go, if you don't have it on you, you can probably buy it. If you wanna start traveling care on only, just give it a try for a weekend or two. As always, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you hanging into the end. Check me out over on Instagram at The Nomad Experiment. Make sure if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe below. It really helps me out. This is all new to me, so if you got any great tips, you've... Other than that, get out there and start traveling, and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.